The new Beast Hunter is actually insanely strong in the new meta and it has a lot of new cars that make it really strong. In this video I will give you a quick guide about Beast Hunter, show its mulligans, win rates as well as some of our games on the last coaching session with it. So if you're serious about Hearthstone, drop a like and subscribe to the channel and don't forget you can hire me for some Hearthstone coaching. Now let's check out the deck. You are not prepared. Here's the variant we used and it has 60% win rate with 22,000 games which is insane like that's so much sample size and it's really really strong like definitely in for a nerf pretty soon if you ask me. But until then, here's what the variant looks like. We have a couple of always bigger germongers, which is basically your main win condition in this one, which help you cleave a lot of damage with your Stonebile Gargan, as well as your Hollow Hound. We have a couple of Awakened Tremors in here, which gives you three beast each, and they're pretty good in their early game, but you can also use them a lot in the mid game and late game too, because you get to buff them. Tormental Musician is also pretty cool, because it gives you a buff for your beasts, and this can land on all sorts of things, including your Barrel of Monkeys, which are also beasts. Trinket Tracker helps you get your good one drops and we also have absorbent parasite which actually doesn't have any tries but you can slap this on your big beasts and this way the cleave becomes even stronger not to mention you can buff this separately like with the help of your uh, buzzard with the help of the new bestial madness with the help of hope of kelt loss and all sorts of things like that and that way you basically double up those effects because you slap this on your stonebound gargan slap it with an always bigger germonger and suddenly you're dealing above 30 damage from hand barrel of monkeys help you tremendously in the early turns and they're pretty nice beasts that it also infuse your stonebound gargan bestial madness obviously is pretty great and it buffs both your minions on the board your hand and deck so that's pretty cool but don't forget you want to be using this after you've cracked open your awakened tremors if you have that option or after you've played some barrel of monkeys because these are not beasts but before you actually cast those spells so if you're gonna be playing these cards might as well do that before bestial madness if the turn allows it obviously don't just always do it after but it's something to think about. Conjured Arrow is in here so you can get a little bit of extra gas and same goes for Gold Panner which has been doing very well for the deck. Messenger Buzzard is also pretty cool and again same rule applies like with the Bestial Madness. You want to be cracking open your Awakened Tremors so that the Buzzard actually buffs all of those into 5-2s instead of 4-1s. It also draws you one of your free beasts in the deck, and the free beasts are only Messenger Buzzard, Stonebound Gargan, as well as Hollow Hound. Selected Reader can also select out of those free beasts, which is pretty cool, so you're always gonna have access to the beast you actually want with the help of these cards. Azerite Chain Gang is in here, but honestly, he felt a little bit lackluster. Like, he wasn't really that amazing unless you actually quick draw him on turn 4, and that's really not gonna happen all that often. So, I'd say this is maybe the first card you might consider cutting if you really want to be including something else. Just don't include a fourth type of beast in here because that might mess up your draws. Stonebound Gargan is here, basically because it's 2 mana cheaper than your Hollow Hound, and you can actually do some serious OTK action with this. Like I said, with the help of all of the hand, deck, and board buffs, and with the magnetize of and with the magnetize of absorbent parasite, and you can also even slap double always bigger germonger for the plus two attack, which technically is plus six damage. But don't think that the effect is gonna take uh, place twice. Like it only happens once. It's not gonna go face twice because you have two bigger germongers. The only catch here is you have to infuse this a little, but it really doesn't take long with a deck like this. And also Discard plus Hollow Hound are the main reason why you have to be really careful how you position on the board, and the way you position around cards like these is, if you have Taunt minions, make sure the first Taunt you play is on the far left, so that way you keep it isolated there and the opponent can only cleave up to two minions like that. If you have more than one Taunt, make sure the second Taunt goes on the far right, again same reasoning, and if you have a location, make sure to put it between minions, like don't have three minions next to each other at all costs basically and you could use even a stealth minion like that for basically the same effect. Agrimar is also in here and it helps you with the card draw, with the damage, getting the extra taunts is not horrible and Hollow Hound again is basically the expensive variant of Stonebound Gargan when you're looking for OTK but it also helps you tremendously in stabilizing games. And last but not least we have Hope of Kelt Loss which is a legendary but I definitely think it is worth having in the deck, same with Agrimar, they're, like they're just working way too well. Uh, Hope of Kelt Loss basically gives you plus 12 damage potential if you actually buff both Parasite and Stonebound Gargan so you can get a bigger Germonger. So uh, definitely is not a small part of this deck. As for the matchups, here's what the stats show. And as you can see, some Paladins might be a little bit tricky, probably because of the Divine Shields and whatnot. And Rage Warrior also seems to be pretty bad for you, but everything else is pretty great.
And as for the mulligans, going first, here's what the stats show. You want your good one drops, messenger buzzard is great, selective reader is also pretty nice, and if you already have a good curve going, gargan also makes sense so you can actually infuse it fast. Gold Banner can also help you big time with the card draw, but the rest you probably have to have a good reason to actually hold on to them. Barrel of Monkeys makes a lot of sense against Paladins if you ask me, so keep that in mind. And as for when on the coin, the situation is not much different, but for some reason the Parasite is a lot higher as a keep here, and I guess you could just straight up use it in the early turns to control the board, cause it does have Rush. So you could be dealing with some early game threats like that. Hope of Kelt Loss becomes a lot more keepable as well. Gold Banner not as amazing anymore apparently, even though I think it still has some merit to it. And same goes for Barrel of Monkeys, like this really doesn't make too much sense for me. Especially against certain opponents, like Barrel of Monkeys can be super powerful, so don't just straight up always throw it. Definitely as a keep against Paladins, I can tell you that much. That's pretty much it for the deck, not that many uh, expensive cards in it, only 2 legendaries and 2 epics and the rest is pretty cheap, so definitely worth trying, even though it might be in for a nerf, so keep that in mind. Anyway, now let's check out some of the games on the last coaching session with it. The dude I coach doesn't talk English very well, but he's definitely very good at listening and he has a pretty good idea of how to play on his own as well, and he did enjoy the session too. So yeah, hope you enjoy as well. Well, obviously we don't want to be keeping the Azerite Chain Gangs, they're meant to be top decked played, not straight up kept. Uh, and also Absorbent Parasite going first is bad, going second is actually good, so I don't get that. Magnetic Rush can magnetize the Max and Beasts, that's cool and all, but going second, what are we magnetizing it to? I guess, I guess you can just straight up play it as a reactive card, I get it. Okay, this is actually a pretty nice hand, I think. Job's done. That's all for now. Next turn we're probably gonna try to play the Selective Breeder, and you're gonna be looking for a Hollow Hand because this is a Shadow Priest, so here you don't wanna OTK, you just wanna don't die and stabilize from there. So let's play the 2 mana Selective Breeder, I think. For, or actually, wait a minute, wait a minute. He has the 1-2, that's annoying. Do we just straight up Barrel of monkeys here. Hmm. What I think I like the monkeys a little bit more. That's one way of using it, Kosi there, but uh, keeping it in the early game, that's not what you're trying to do in the early turns. You probably just use it to rush something in the early turns going second. That chain gang a turn early, sadly. Well, here I think it's time to select a breeder for a hollow hound. Hopefully we see a hollow hound. We do. Grab one hollow hound. That's about it. So yeah, right now name of the game is survive till turn six, and we're probably gonna be able to heal back to full. But uh, he is gonna be Punching us very hard until then. Let's play the two mana messenger buzzard and put down the two mana barrel of monkeys as well. Oh, it's only three beasts? You're not wrong. No, it's not. Absorbent parasite is also in there. No, that's not a beast even. That's weird. Anyway, go face with the one free. Yeah, you're right. There's only three beasts in here. Good call. Well, shit. Good news is now the Stonebound Gargan is gonna be ready for whatever and we're actually gonna buff it. Bad news is he positioned well against it. Uh, fuck. Okay, in this case, 1-2 two, trades into the 2-2. Two, two. 1-3 trades into it as well. Play the 4 mana far left Stonebound Gargan. And give it an always bigger Jermonger so it actually kills everything. And attack into the 5-4. Okay, now we really hope he plays a bunch of minions for next turn as well. Because if he just plays the 5 damage, that's not going to give us enough shit to heal from. That's all. Yeah. 
Bullshit. Come on, dude, play another dude. If he has the one mana Mindster that kills us, he doesn't. He should have used location first there so he can see if he finds it. But he is not that smart now, is he? Okay, he doesn't use location at all. That's kind of weird. Well, sadly, we're going to have to Hollow Hound here on the 5 4 anyway. So, uh, whip out Hollow Hound and slap it into the 5 4. And just go face with the rest. This guy played smart. He played around the cleave on the, this turn. He he didn't really give us uh, a great opportunity to, to get the good healing going. He knew what he had to do and he done it. Okay, he's looking for another batch of Rotting Necromancer. That gives us one extra turn, but I don't think we can do much in the next turn. Okay, he's probably gonna give us some stuff here. Doesn't. Doesn't give us shit, but at least he used the hero power not on our face. Okay. Okay, so what we need to do here is definitely taunt up, but what else can we do? I guess the Azerite... no, the Azerite Chain Gang gives him a tradable minion, so uh, that's bad for us. You'd rather play the... 2 mana barrel of monkeys. 2 mana selected reader for another hollow hound. And uh, let's play... Let's put down the 2 mana messenger buzzard. Because that's an extra minion that... Uh, Basically, we can use the two mana Bestial Madness next turn if we want to, or the Germonger. Just go face with the 1 1 and that's all. Okay, let's see if we're alive. It's gonna be a close one. That's a good start. And he also positioned like a moron. This is why uh, positioning is very important, guys. Look at him go. He literally threw the entire game right there. This is the moment where this man fucked up. This area right there, chat. One off lethal. Can we do it? Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go, chat. That's what we like to see. So, uh... Definitely want to be playing the always bigger Germonger. But uh, first, you attack the 2 free. Do we want to even cleave the 6 4? I, I guess we do. So 2 free attacks into the 5 free. 1 1 kills it. Put down 4 mana Hollow Hound. Uh, 6 mana Hollow Hound, I mean. 6 mana Hollow Hound. Do we Jermonger here? It's gonna be plus 2 instead of plus 1. We need all the healing we need. We get. So uh, 1 mana always bigger Jermonger on the 4-5. Attack the 2-3 with it. And the 1-3 kills the 4-3 after that, the 4-1. Yeah, kill it. Okay, stabilizing. We have another Hollow Hound lined up with Bestial Madness. That's gonna be great. But look at him fuck up uh, grandly there with the location like that. Cost him so much. Okay, that's not amazing for us. But uh, it's not that bad either. I'm pretty sure next turn he's gonna play more minions, so this Hollow Hound is gonna be even better next turn. So let's play the four mana Azerite Chain Gang. One mana Awakened Tremors. Play a couple of Bursting Germongers in the middle and Hero Power. Job done. 
Okay, so if we live through this turn, we should be winning guaranteed. Cast hero power, so if he has get one mana mines here, we might be dead. That does draw him the goddamn mind seer. So did we lose? We didn't because the 5-4 didn't give him 5 damage. Neat. GG. We don't even need the heal. Nice. That was a clutch. That was a big ass clutch. And this guy also threw, like, if he positioned uh, far left, far right uh, with the location in the middle, we would have been only able to cleave two minions, whereas giving us the plus three, that was just huge. Okay, we definitely like the messenger buzzer. The barrel of monkeys sounds good to me. What about the rest of them, though? Technically, I can see the stonebound gargan being a good keep. Yeah, it seems like it's actually good, especially with a crib like this. I would toss the Hollow Hound for now, though. Like, it could be important if this guy turns out to be Shadow, but we still would much rather have a little bit of more early game, so let's just remove the Hound. Okay, it's that thing. Okay, well, play the Trinket Tracker, why not? Astro Automation, that's still a meme deck, right? That's all. Let's put a Barrel of Monkeys for now, maybe. Next turn... Well, actually, wait a minute. I guess we can coin next turn. Uh, play the barrel right now. Yeah, barrel of monkeys. Next turn we get the buzzards, awaken tremors, and maybe coin one tremor out. What? What is that even? Should we be worried? He's gonna try to forge the... Get an extra copy of the minion you discovered. I think you can use the two mana conjured arrow on the free free. And just uh, crack open Awaken Tremors, I guess. And trade with the free one. Mm -hmm. I think that's all. Crop of Count Loss, not the most important thing in the world. Agrimar though, like if you want to be playing uh, Hunter right now, Agrimar is always a great inclusion, so I don't know, you can't really straight up change him. Okay, let's put down the buzzards. And uh, what else should we do in order not to overdraw? Put down one bursting germonger. And point out a barrel of monkeys, perhaps. Okay, this way we're one card short of overdrawing two cards, actually, without the coin now. That's all. Mildly annoying. That 
that's a very nice thought there. Let's put one more, or actually no. Uh, yeah, two mana gold banner, one mana bursting germonger, and two mana bestial madness apparently. Yeah, one more germonger and two mana bestial madness. The one two, which is gonna be a two two now, uh, trades the one two and two four can go face. Even if he silences right now, we still have hope of health loss, and we're gonna start buffing like that. That's annoying. Give us a big hollow helm though, that's great. Let's just equip Hope of Kelt Lost here. Now we can start looking for some OTK possibilities out of this guy. This free free could serve as a good uh target for our OTK potentials. Just go face. Next turn we can play the messenger again, maybe with a barrel. We already have the absorbent parasite, so uh this could be a turn 9 OTK potential. Okay, he gives us small minions to fuck with. This is mildly annoying, but not that much. Your face is attacking into Ziliax, that much has been said. Let's do that. Your face into... No, actually first, first play the two mana barrel of monkeys so that you can actually buff the monkey like that. Let's play the one mana trinket tracker as well while we're at it. If that gives you a uh, bursting germonger, we can crack those open to buff him. It didn't. So your face goes into the free too. I guess you can put down the two mana messenger buzzards. Your pattern really doesn't do all that much, but put down the bursting germonger. All right. What's the idea of this deck? This plus this plus this equals GG. You got a bunch of cleave, with the help of always bigger germonger, and the cleave is gonna be obscenely high. Next turn we actually have Stonebound Gargan with double always bigger germonger. And Absorbent, is that lethal? Answers to these questions and more, right after the break. He positioned properly here with the free 10 on that side. Honestly, it should have been on the far on the right side of Ziliax, and that way we wouldn't have been able to cleave from Ziliax alone, but the worst positioning would have been if this was on the far right. No, actually this is the worst position he could have done. Because the taunt remains there. Okay, so we have... Okay. Okay, kind sir. 7, 13... Uh... 15, 17 on the cleave, that's always lethal. Play the, set, the four mana Stonebound. Magnetize the Absorbent Parasite onto it. And give it always bigger Germonger twice. The effect of always bigger Germonger only happens once, but the plus two is just obviously worth. And attack in the middle, GG. Should have played around the chat. And he honestly could. He just had to make a smaller, narrower board there. He did not want to be playing a bunch of small shits there. We're going first, so the Parasite... I don't think I'm gonna hold on to that. Awakened Tremors and Torn Mantle Musician are great though, so let's just remove the 2-drop.
Okay, pretty nice curve. Tormental musician sounds good. That's about it. Let's play the two mana gold banner and trade the one one. That's pretty nice. Let's play the two mana buzzards and also play the one mana awaken tremors so you can actually have more minions to buff with the buzzards. And I guess we just have to go face here. We're not expecting him to buff this one free if he's playing what we're playing at least. This is what we're listening to currently on the correct time. Enjoy. I smell gold and have their waters. Keep on panning. Ooh, finally! They said it can be done. Sadly, we cannot use the two free to kill it so we can buff the minions, but still play the four man Azerite chain gang. That's just an obscene amount of stats. The two free bird can kill the one two, and the rest can go face. Pan away, pan away. Mm. Plays the small variants. Cool. Okay. Let's play the two mana selective breeder. And what are we selecting from it though? Should we pick another bird? Have double hollow, maybe picking a stonebound gargan so we can have smaller. Yeah, let's do that. Two mana selective reader for a four mana stonebound gargan. Mm -hmm. The 2 2 chicken kills itself into a taunt, the 1 2 kills it as well. Uh, Play a couple of bursting germongers. Actually, all three germongers on the far right. And uh, the two free and the one one banner can kill the two free and just go face with the taunt. At this point, I think we've drawn enough cards. We still are missing the germongers, sadly. But uh, we do have a trinket tracker with a 66 chance of drawing the germongers because we already played one tremor. We're also pretty pretty heavy on the board right now. Best you can have here is a Gargan, and that still leaves us with 15 damage on boards. He ain't doing that though. If we get Germonger here, he's Giga dead. Okay, so uh, let's see if we can do it. One mana Trinket Tracker for the 66% chance lethal. There you fucking go, play the 4 mana Stonebound Gargan, give it the Germonger, slap in the middle, and the rest can go face. GG. Very pleasant duck, not gonna lie. Literally just picked it up and we're all already doing some pretty sick stuff. Pretty sick stuff. It's a bit OP, obviously, it's a bit OP. People are already complaining, even in High Legend, about it, so uh, I wouldn't really uh, be surprised if it hits uh, next on the chopping block. Maybe Always Bigger Drewmonger is gonna become a two mana spell. It sounds like a, a very plausible thing to do. Your Trinket Tracker is not gonna be able to pull it like that. Okay, against the Pally. Messenger is great. I'm not sure the Parasite really is worth it here, like. No, I think it's all about the cleaves, so let's get the messenger buzzer toss the rest. 
would be great if we get some early game like a torn mental musician that's the bane of his early game and you get it let's fucking go this is insanely good torn mantle musician away that gives you a two free buzzard next turn which is nice trades all of his early game one drops perfect is he gonna coin not the taunt anything but the taunt Okay, let's fucking go. So yeah, one free trades a 2-1, and you can play the buzzard. Neato. That's the donkey boy, but it's not that bad anymore. Hmm. Well, in this case, uh, actually, let's check the trinket tracker. In this case, Jermonger, you say? Let's play another buzzard. I don't think he's gonna trade it this early. And double trade the taunt. Let's trade the 1 2 into the 2 1. Nice ish, I think. Play the 2 mana gold banner, right? Why not? And uh, maybe even play the, four ma the 2 mana absorbent parasite without magnetizing it. Play it on the either far left or far right. And just trade a couple of these idiots. That's about it. Here it's all about surviving. Let's see. Behave. I actually have the Jermonger nice and early, so that's gonna be good. But next turn is probably gonna be a Stonebound Gargan. We might actually even consider a Jermonger here. It's, they're gonna be decently large with decently small targets. Gives us the banner, thanks man. Ooh, there's the Hollow Hound as well though, that's great. Thanks man. Uh, we don't have this infused already. What you could do is trade the banner into the free one. And that's gonna give you the infuse. No, not that one, the other one. We wanna make a good cleave. The other free one. The, the right free one. free one. The right free one. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay. How much damage is that gonna be? It's gonna be 7. So, uh, 6, 12, 14 damage. Is that really worth for us to do right now? Or do we just play the smaller one in, uh, control for now? It's a good chunk. It's one of the better chunks we're gonna see. Let's play the big one. Play the 5-7, give it always bigger Jermonger and attack the free one with it. The middle free one, obviously. There we go. It's a good amount of damage, and he is gonna need to deal with this right now, so that can give us a little bit of breathing room. I mean, if he literally just trades this somehow and uh, still plays a couple of small shits, you thought decking another Jermonger could give you lethal. Okay, yeah, literally a Jermonger off the top is lethal right now. That ain't it. But uh, this Hollow Hound is insanely good right now, so play the 6 mana Hollow Hound into the 1-1. We're back to full health, and the moment he plays something small is the moment he dies. Good 
Not really, because we don't have the Jermonger right now, but you get it. Reporting for duty. Reporting for duty. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. That's not a Jermonger. Um... Let's play Conjured Arrow into the 5-5. Five five. If that gives you always bigger Jermonger, we get lethal. We didn't. In that case, play the 4-mana Stonebound Gargan. Attack into the 5-3 like that with the Gargan. 4-4 four, four attacks into the middle, and play a Thorn Mantle Musician. Hey, happy to have you, Awkward Turtle. It's been a while, my guy. Welcome, welcome. Because the 4 mana Keeper Strength, that's gonna be a little bit uh, bad for us. Doesn't seem like he does. Okay, still that on board, bro. Cool, cool. That was fun. That was real fun. Got him a good. Okay, it's a 40. Got that chicken we were talking about. Play the trinket tracker. Likely Plague, realistically Blood. Marie. Never mind. <laughs> Let's just barrel of monkeys for now. We are going to need a lot of uh, minions in our hand here, so you can actually play around potential Dirty Rats, potential uh, Patchworks. We'd much rather he's not able to, to kill those. Okay, him drawing a bunch. We're not very happy about that, but I don't think we get the Sacrifice or Absorbent Parasite here, because you are going to need it for a very big OTK later, like probably above 40 OTK, potentially, if he has his way. Um, let's play the two mana messenger buzzards and one mana awaken tremors. The one three can trade into the one two, and next turn we get to kill it like that. Most probably, that's all. Yeah, don't we all? He has a moist nose. Ah, could have been quicker. Could have been quicker, turtle. Took a while, actually. But yeah, we're back at it now. Well, that's annoying. He gets to play it again. Hmm. Why do you come on the matchup where this doesn't actually matter as much? Still, can't say no to that. Play it as Red Chain Gang. And go face, apparently. Okay. This banner has been panning hard indeed. Hmm. 
Let's play our banner as well. What mold should I make? Here you still have to have a Hollow Hound in your mind when you're playing a Death Knight. It probably doesn't run it. A lot of better cards for the class now, but still it's something to think about. Let's play a Barrel of Monkeys. And... Technically we don't need to play anything else, but I... Should we... Nah... Blood Bowl would be pretty bad for us, so let's trade the 2-1 into the 1-1. And just go face with everything else. Like, Blood Bowl is gonna be the real punish for you here, so giving him an extra Germonger really doesn't help us that much. This is already a board he wants to be clearing. And he's not even gonna be able to. Next turn, the weapon sounds like a good idea to me. Okay, he's not gonna do that, apparently. Lucky. We are going to be burning a card if we go Hope of Kelpalos. Still don't have our Germongers in hand, so that's a little bit risky. I, wonder. I think we're willing to take that risk. Play the Hope of Kelpalos. Your face kills a taunt. The other three attack minions kill the other taunts, and the taunt can go face. Okay. There are three really good cards for us to burn right now. Always bigger Germonger and a Trinket Tracker also. Guaranteed draws you to Germonger, but Tracker is not going to be that bad. Parasite would also be not the best burn for us. Anything else, I think we're fine. I guess Beastial Madness would also be not the best thing to burn. Messenger Buzzards. But honestly, anything we burn right now, it's not critical. We still have second copy of all of those, so it's kind of fine. At least the important ones. Perfect. Okay, uh, quite the chunky hand. Let's play another Barrel of Monkeys. You can uh, conjure an arrow, I guess. It's not the worst thing in the world on his 2 2. Play a couple of Bursting Germongers and a Torn Mantle Musician last. Play them, uh, you can't really position around anything. Play them out. All of them on the far left, maybe. One uh, Musician. The Musician between the 3-2 and the 2-4. Your face goes face, everything else goes face as well. Okay, pretty nice boards. Germongers missing in action chat. Doesn't even kill us. Cool. That's pretty bad for him. We're still missing the goddamn thing though. Well, let's put down another panner, apparently. We gotta draw that thing as fast as we can. I smell gold in them there waters. Uh, yeah, all the minions are going face. What else are we doing, though? Let's just waste the four-man Azerite chain gang on the far left and hero power. At this point, we're really not caring about him burning a card for us. Like, we have so many cleaves. I guess the Absorbent Parasite would be the worst burn. Okay, finally the Germonger in the house. 
He's probably gonna go with uh, eight mana, clear the whole board here, though. Double Blood Bowl would have been even worse. I guess he doesn't have either of those. Most of our minions are still healing him back for 10. We're gonna remain with a 3 1 and a 2 1. Never mind. Well, that's one less healing for him, two less healing. He's hero powering into the 2 3 most probably. That gives him even less healing. I mean, with this board state, he's kind of screwed. Wait a moment, how much damage? 12... 14... 15... So that's 14 plus 11. So yeah, play the far left stonebound Gargan. Uh, play the 2 mana Bestial Madness first. That's even bigger actually. Uh, far left absorbent on the 7-9. And always bigger Jermonger on the 15. And attack the 1-1 one, one with it. GG. Well, that was a pretty nice uh, note to end it on. Pretty sick stuff. Yeah, not even blood DK can handle all of this nonsense. Good stuff, good stuff. Alrighty, man. Well, all around great stuff. Uh, diamond pen to diamond four in two hours. Can't say no to that without bonus stars, at least. Great. Thank you. Thank you as well, man. Thank you as well. <laughs> Have a good rest of your day and see you around. If you want to do the prime, now would be a good time. <laughs> yeah.